I think, one of the best actors on British TV, Mr Ricky Tomlinson. I'll be your long-haired lover from Liverpool and I'll do anything you say. I'll be your long-haired lover from Liverpool and I'll do anything you say. Come on, come on out. How oh, dear. Thank you, thank you for being here, and thank you for uh, hanging around. I know you've been uh, in the green room all evening there. I wasn't the best stuff of the world. Uh, can we, do you mind if we uh, get uh, a certain phrase that we love to hear you say? Can we uh, get this out of the way early? Absolutely. My arse. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> now I can relax. Absolutely. <laughs> I was waiting to hear that, and now I can take it easy. Um, now, let's talk about what you're doing at the moment, what you're up to in your life, because how old are you now, Ricky? I'm uh, 65 in uh, 60... September. I get me pension in September. Are you going to take it easy? No, I'm not taking it easy. You know, I've worked all my life. I've got a family who me, three brothers, all graft, we all work hard. You're a proper working man. Well, yeah, my mum died last year at 86. She worked till she was 70 odd, you know. Wow. When she retired, we were all disgusted. We said, that's the trouble with you, ma'am, you're all self. <laughs> 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 she just packed up. Uh, um, you know, you've had proper jobs over the years, I know. Well, I'm a plaster, I was a plaster till I was 40. And then I, I got into this game after coming out of jail. Yeah. And uh, I've never looked back. I've really enjoyed it as well, you know. Well, now, let me ask you about the difference between doing something like acting, which is, uh, which is a craft and it's a, a talent which I have a great respect for, I really do. Um, but at the same time, I wonder whether, is there the same satisfaction when you finish a day acting and you work on a show or a play or a film, do you get the same satisfaction that you get when you've plastered a wall? No. You get a far bigger satisfaction. <laughs> do you know why? Because the bloody wages are different. <laughs> I like that in this game, and in the yeah. building game, they're crap. But I used to, years ago, I did a little bit of labouring, I did a little bit of working, I did a bit of building. Believe it or not, I did. And I used to really like going home and knowing I'd done something successfully. Like, I once successfully put up some jib rock coving. There, yeah, I see. Yeah, hey. that's quite a talent. Yeah, well, I can do that in the real. I can do that in situ. Here, don't have to buy it ready-made. I can do it real. You can do the proper coving. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you show off. Well, no, that's it. Yeah, city and gills, man. Eh? You see, that's a, that's a craft, that's a talent, that's a real thing. It is a talent, yeah. Whereas the acting, sometimes, I imagine it must feel kind of like, for want of a smaller word, nebulous. I don't know what that word means, yeah. but I'll take your word for this. Yeah, it's nebulous. <laughs> yeah, it's nebulous, yeah. <laughs> How did you wind up then? Because it's a, kind of a career leap there. I mean... Well, no, when, as I say, I was blacklisted when I come out of jail in 17... So you were in jail, this was because of your union activities, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the, the one and only strike the building workers ever had, the first one. And we got done for conspiracy, which is a farce. Yeah. And I got two years. And what we were after, lad, we were after £35 for a week's work. 35 quid. And safety conditions, because in them days, I'm going back to 1972, there was more people got killed in the building industry every year than the mining industry and the farming industry yeah. put together. So you were after basic kind of human rights requirements? We were, after, we were after somewhere to get washed, somewhere to go to the toilets, yeah. and somewhere to get dry if it rained. And I know that sounds awful, and people watching the telly now say, oh, come on. But you go on the sites now, unless it's a really big organised site, you don't get any of them conditions. So what, so essentially you're saying that nothing's really changed? Nothing, no, no, no. In fact, it's worse because everyone's on the lump now. They all, do a, they all do their jobs on a price. And that's why these young people, and I feel so sorry for them, they buy a house now for 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 pounds and they're buying a load of shit. Because people have to do their jobs too quick. Yeah. You have to do it too quick, you have to throw the bricks up, throw the plasterboards on the wall, skim it as quick as you can, lay the floors as quick as you can, and they're not getting value for money. Uh, does it depress you, or does it concern you overly the state of this country, or because it seems to me, and obviously I live in the south, I, you know, I, I, I'm kind of out of touch with reality, I'll be the first to admit that. Do you think that uh, are things at a crisis point, are things got that bad, or, or I'll be muddling through, what's happening? I, I, I don't know what's happening, honestly, and, and, and sometimes I'm glad that I haven't got time to take that much interest in it, because I'm out broke, you know. My mum died last year, as I say, she was 86, she worked all her life. My dad worked all his life, me and my three brothers, we've all worked all our lives. And we've paid into the National Health Service. When my mum died, she died in the hospital with the four lads around her. There. there was pain coming off the ceiling, the, the, the doors wouldn't shut on the things because the, the wooden doors were warped, there was, the, the floors were dirty. What kept them hospitals going was the auxiliary staff and the doctors and the nurses. They are angels, and I don't know what they get paid, but if you trebled it, it still wouldn't be enough. The National Health Service is in decay. And, we can, and we, can, we, we can alter the figures and we can be phony. We can say we're going to plough this much money in, we're going to plough that much money in. But the, nurse, the nurses don't get it and the patients don't get it. Is it what's going to happen, do you think? I don't know, lad. I, don't, I wish there was a bloody revolution. I'll lead it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wouldn't fire it. Some of us would probably follow. <laughs> can I, can I, you know what I really like? I, I mean, I think you're talking sense, but also I love the fact you're calling me lad, because that doesn't happen much anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I'm confused with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Do you mind if I call you Daddy occasionally? Cause, cause... <laughs> hey, for all you know, I might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did spread it around a bit, didn't I, you? I did put us about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which, which I think, hats off to you. Uh, was this when you were building that you were putting around, or, or when you no, became an actor? Uh, no, you've probably read the book. And the book I have. Done, the book done well. Hold oh, on, no, but I've got the book here. The book oh. is called Ricky. It's Ricky's autobiography. It's out. It's uh, out. That's the paperback's yeah. out today, yeah. So the yeah, paperback's just out now. Was it ghostwritten? Did you write it? No, I, I wrote it, but then, because I didn't want to start it when I was a little lad living in the two up, two down, yep, yep, yep. I had to get a guy and told me to structure it. How, how honest were you prepared to be? Were you I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why we wrote the book. I didn't want to write the book, because I'm, I'm just married again, as you know, for the second yeah. time. Well, I've been married just over 12 months. And someone was going to do an unofficial one. So I said to Rita, look, this is the thing. If they're going to do an unofficial one, it's going to be full of crap. There's been enough lies written about me. I'm going to do this, but look, there's, there's things in this that, that you don't know about. I would never have told you. But if I'm doing this, it's got to be warts and all. And it is warts and all. And the stuff in there that I'm, not, that I'm not very proud of, the stuff in there I am ashamed of. I've heard people I wish I hadn't have heard, said things I wish I could take back. But I can't. But what you see is what you get. But what a great life to look back on then. I mean, I know it's far I've had a wonderful over. life and I've got the best brothers in the world. I've got my little olive home in Spain, which everyone takes the mickey out of me. And they say, why haven't you got a villa? And I say, I could, I could have a villa tomorrow. I've got a, I've got a fancy caravan with a bloody big horn. You've got I a go caravan? A, a caravan with an horn and it's got a fit in the kitchen. Oh, that's oh, no, no, listen, to, seriously. The caravan's 30 foot long with a bedroom. Take the toilet out, put a flush toilet in. Lovely. Got the horn with a fit in the kitchen. No messing. No, fireplace, fire. Easy chair, the big telly, the sky, the lot. Bingo. And on a Thursday, I go to the bingo. Hey. With reset, where they call the numbers in five languages. So, uh, well, that so that's great. How does that work in five languages? Well, the girl calls it in Spanish and English. Yeah. Then there's this old guy. Uno, one. Uno, one. That's good, yeah. But do they do in the Spanish like two fat ladies? No, they don't Lady Gronda or something. No, because they're too, too proud over there. They don't have any fat ladies. Don't they? Do. No, well, they don't think they do. <laughs> and then this old guy does it in German, French, and um, German and Dutch. Have you won much at bingo? Uh, uh, we won um, 100, 120 euros. That's not a lot, really. Well, it wasn't because there were six of us sharing it. Yeah. <laughs> Those bloody Germans. I know, I know. <laughs> that Dutch bloke leaving at the end. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm on top I was going to give you the Heimlich then. I thought you had something stuck in your throat. What? <laughs> we'll come round the back and I was going to give Heimlich. you some of that. That's how it all starts. Um, <laughs> what's wrong with it? Nothing. Um, hey, you started acting in the 80s then, OK? Yeah. So we've established this. Uh, uh, the big hit uh, of recent years has, of course, been The Royal Family. Absolutely, yeah. What a, what a great show to be part of. It was wonderful. Did you know when you, when you were first contented? I mean, did you see it? Was it in script form or was it improvisational? Did you... I, I met Caroline to do it at one of the Royal Television Society dudes and she bumped into me and I'd had a few drinks and she'd had a few drinks and she said, oh, I'm awful sorry, you're my dad or you're going to be my dad. And I went back to Reese and said, Caroline there? She said, I'm a dad or something. I said, you must have had more than I thought. <laughs> But, but Caroline here, and you know, sometimes when I read the paper about myself and the people are slagging me and knocking me, that's fine. It doesn't hurt anymore because my mum's dead. But when I, when I read the paper on the slagging air, I get so angry because she's the most wonderful human being you've ever come across in your yeah. life. She's brilliant, she's generous, kind, sincere, honest, and she can't do enough for anyone. She's brilliant. She's kind of managed to sort of, it seems, to have stayed out of the papers for a while. I mean, it's not been quite as bad, of course, mm. so, uh, you know, I hope that whatever she's doing now, she's sort of sorted out. Yeah, and, and she is, she's happy. fine. Um, is there going to be another series, though? Because there were two I series. think there might be some one-offs. I know there was talk at one time about making a movie about we'd go on holiday right. and we go in the caravan and we don't come out the caravan for the fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim looks out the window and says, Look at that dopey bastard with his <laughs> Chicago shorts on. Get out! But you don't go outside, so you, don't, you can't see anyone. But that's a brilliant idea. It's great, yeah. And you could use your caravan. No, uh, hey, yeah, but I have to do it in Spanish. Double bubble. No, you <laughs> um, do. You, now, let's have a look. We've got a clip here of, uh, I think it's either one of the very early episodes, it might even be the first episode of The Royal Family. Uh, and it was, you know what, it's kind of fully formed the minute it, it came on the screen. This is Ricky in action way back when. Great show to be Real kind of team effort as well. It was I mean, great. It was, it was wonderful to go to work, honestly. It was yeah. great. You know. Um, do you uh, do you look after yourself? Do you uh, do you exercise? Do you eat right? Yeah, I eat as much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> you got the gym? Which gym? Jim Jim, Jim Royal? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> my age. It takes me but all you, my time to put my underpants you, on. You've got to look up you've got to look after yourself though, Wicky. Well I, 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 I'm, I'm I'm pretty active. I'm sort of out and about and I'm I'm a workaholic, yeah. you know. Which Rita's, tra Rita's trying to cure, you know. Because I've got, cause I've got a, a series of Down to Air to do, which starts next month. I've had a comedy written for me uh, about a, a, a joke, a guy who tells jokes. Right. And 
And I, and I said to the, the, the London company, you're going to make it. And I said, look, if it's, if it's me and, and I'm working at, and there's a couple of kids in the show, I'd like them to be northern kids. And good enough, they all came up to, to Liverpool and auditioned sort of 20, 30 kids off the street and picked six which were going down for a little screen test. So that'll be a little memory for them kids. And yeah. maybe one or two will get lucky, get the job and get into TV and acting like I did. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always enjoy seeing you on screen. It's a pleasure to, to meet you. It's always God a pleasure to see you on screen. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, lad. Cheers very much for coming. Thank you. 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 Thank